In my last video, we learned about how consistent of a partner beer has been throughout human history, especially during times of disease. But it's equally interesting to talk about how beer has evolved over the years. Of course, the craft beer community is obsessed with more recent developments like the New England IPA or the rise of sour ales. But the biggest change in the beer world is far, far older. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers. Beer nerds and historians alike all love to study how lagers, the world's most popular beers, emerged in Northern Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries. These beers are clear in appearance and deliver a crisp effervescence that makes them incredibly refreshing and popular. Such characteristics lend themselves well to the cool mountain climates of Germany, Austria, and the Czech Republic. But recent evidence suggests that another area of the world, thousands of miles away, may have played a key role in the emergence of this major beer family. If you're excited to dive into some beer history, leave a like down below and let's explore this alternate tale together. The rivers that flow down from the Alps form wide, sweeping valleys that are quite fertile amongst the hills. This verdant isolation was favorable for the monks in the Middle Ages, and when they built their monasteries, they carved their beer cellars into the rocky hills. It didn't take them long to realize that if they packed the caves they dug with ice from the rivers and streams around them, they could have a cold storage for their brews well into the summer months. This storage technique made their beers much more stable, eliminating much of the spoilage brewers in warmer areas faced each summer. Yeast would sink to the bottom of the barrel to stay out of harm's way, and these cool stored beers, or lagered in German, quickly began changing the yeast from generation to generation. Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the species of yeast that has been turning grain mash into beautiful brews for thousands of years. This yeast, brewer's yeast, likes to hang out at the top of the fermentation vessel and does its job fermenting beer quickly and at higher temperatures. The flavorful ales these yeasts produce form nearly the totality of the brewing world for thousands of years until lagered beers produced a new and exciting yeast players. Saccharomyces pastorianus works much slower and at a cooler temperature and was referred to as bottom fermenting yeast. This yeast loves cooler environments to do its work, and while it may work a little slower than ale yeast, lager yeast produces a very clean and crisp brew that is known for just how refreshing it is. And after ale yeast was slowly diverged and transformed into lager yeast, it quickly produced beers that were very popular in Northern Europe. And when the 19th century brought increased trade and early refrigeration technology, and along with German emigration around the world, lager beer became the global powerhouse we know today, dominating most beer markets with a major lager or pilsner brand in every beer drinking nation. This is the standard narrative beer history has gone with over the past few hundred years. Ale yeast gradually evolving in the cool mountain caves of Europe. But there has been some new evidence unearthed over the past 10 years that threatens to turn this story on its head. See there are two big question marks in this common origin story of lager. First, is that Saccharomyces pastoranus is different enough from Saccharomyces cerevisiae that scientists believe it would have taken thousands of years to evolve that way, not just a couple hundred years fermenting in a cave. Secondly, in the 1980s, when genetic research made its way into the brewing industry, it was discovered that while lager and ale yeast are quite closely related, it seems that lager yeast is a hybrid of ale yeast rather than being a direct evolutionary descendant. So there's another parent that was involved at some point here. And so we've been in limbo for a complete explanation for the last 30 to 40 years. While the beer cave evolution theory has been the most complete, it doesn't seem that enough time has passed and the genetics between the two yeast strains don't 
quite line up perfectly. And the missing link wouldn't present itself until an archaeological dig in 2011 in South America of all places. A study published in the Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States and America identifies the other parent strain of Pastoranus as Saccharomyces ubianus. Ubianus is a yeast that is native to the chilly beech woods of Patagonia in southern Argentina and was being used to ferment a low alcohol beverage by the native populations there some 400 years before Germans began storing their beer in mountain caves. And while they looked at Ubianus under the microscope, it was a 99.5% genetic match with the unknown parent of lager yeast in the hybrid theory. All this genetic evidence suggests that lager yeast isn't an evolution of traditional ale yeast from Europe and Middle East. Rather, lager yeast is a hybrid of ale yeast and this Ubianus yeast from the chilly southern portion of South America. Lager yeast cold tolerance didn't come from the cold hills of the Alps, rather it was crossed in from cold tolerant yeast of the southern Andes. But how on earth did this yeast make its way to northern Europe? Well, time to take you back to your middle school social studies class and talk about the concept of the Columbian Exchange. In the mid-1500s, just before lagers began to rise as a regional brew, ships sailing between the continents of Europe and North and South America were a common sight. The Europeans brought things like livestock, alcohol, citrus fruits, and grain crops to the Americas and exchanged them for great crops like tobacco, potatoes, corn, and tomatoes all going to Europe, along with some slaves of course. Researchers believe that it would have been easy for yeast floating in and around South America to hitch a ride for Europe on the ship timbers or barrels made from South American trees or even animals like turkeys and llamas. Perhaps the shipping of ale barrels back and forth to South America introduced the South American yeast to the European brewing industry directly, allowing the two yeasts to co-mingle and eventually produce lager yeast. This appears to be how it happened genetically speaking, and looking at the other microbes that made the journey between continents, like smallpox, flu, and typhus, it seems very likely that yeast could have easily done the same. So along with all the other great crops and livestock that made the great journeys across the sea, the beer world might just owe the existence of lager yeast, and by extension their clean and bubbly brews, to the explorers and merchants of the Columbian Exchange. And while many microbes that made that journey on these ships caused all sorts of problems, yeast seems to have changed the world for the better by making that leap. So what do you think about lagers link to South America? Does this change how you view those innovative alpine brewers? Let me know down in the comments section below. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you in my next transatlantic video. Cheers!